Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 1 to 5 of section 3 of the purple booklet. You can see here we've got a copy of the diagram um, which looks at how HCL is produced in the stomach. Question 1 is which of the following is the most direct consequence of production of HCL by the parietal cells? We can see here that HCL produced by the parietal cells then goes and acts on the D cells here, and that produces somatostatin which goes on to inhibit the actions of the chief cells. Chief cells produce pepsinogen, so the expected response would be a decrease in pepsinogen, which would be answer C. To check it, let's go through the other answers. If we look at A, the increase of production of HCL wouldn't be one of the um, consequences because somatostatin inhibits the action of the parietal cell, which produces HCL. It won't be B either because the increased production of histamine um, by the H ECL cells um, is independent of the amount of HCL present. And then if we look at D, the decreased production of somatostatin won't happen because we've talked about how the D cell which produces somatostatin will be stimulated by HCL, not inhibited by it. So the answer must be C. Looking at question two then, which of the following is affected most directly by negative feedback? Let's look at the chief cells first. We can see that they produce pepsinogen and if there was negative feedback, we would expect something involved with pepsinogen uh, to affect the action of the chief cells. And we can see that the peptides produced um, act on the G cells and through gastrin, the chief cells are activated. So that would be an example of positive feedback, not negative feedback. If we look at B, the parietal cells, they produce HCL. And as we said, through the action of somatostatin, HCL can activate D cells, somatostatin is produced, and that inhibits the action of the parietal cells as we can see on the diagram here. And therefore, that would be an example of negative feedback. So the answer um, could be B, but let's see if the others are more directly affected by negative feedback. ECL cells um, produce histamine, but there's no feedback um, from its product, so it's not going to be it. And then it will be D, because we've already talked about how the parietal cells are affected by negative feedback. And so the answer is definitely going to be B. If we look at question three, then it says the vagus nerve stimulates the parietal cells to produce HCL. What other effect could this nerve have that would lead to an increased HCL production? So if we look at option A, sensitization of the parietal cells to somatostatin uh, would only cause a decrease in HCL because somatostatin has an inhibitory effect on its production. What about B, the de desensitization of the parietal cells to histamine? Well, histamine causes the excitation or the activation of the parietal cell and so desensitizing parietal cells to histamine would decrease HCL production so it's not going to be B either. If we look at C, the sensitization of ECL cells to gastrin would it increase HCL production? Well gastrin causes um, an increase in ECL cell activity which causes an increase in histamine which then goes on to activate the parietal cells so that would increase HCL so we know the answer is C. But just to rule it out, let's look at D, the desensitization of the ECL cells to gastrin. Well, that's the opposite of what we just spoke about, and we know that would have the opposite effect and actually decrease the amount of HCL produced, so we know the answer has to be C. Let's look at question four now. Which of the following outlines the shortest route by which a change in chief cell activity affects parietal cell activity? Option A is that an increase in pepsinogen leads to an increase in peptides, and that leads to an increase in gastrin. Well, we can see that's actually true. An increase in pepsinogen here leads to more peptides produced in this diagram. And we can see that peptides act on here at the bottom of the diagram on G cells to produce an increase in gastrin. So that makes sense. But let's have a look at the other routes to make sure that's absolutely the shortest. B says a decrease in pepsinogen would lead to a decrease in peptides and therefore lead to a decrease in somatostatin. And while the first half of that is true, the peptide concentration doesn't affect somatostatin because peptides don't act on the D cells, and so it's not going to be B. If we look at option C, a decrease in pepsinogen leads to a decrease in peptides, which we know is true. But does this lead to a decrease in HCL? Well, no, in fact, it would actually lead to an increase in HCL through gastrin's action on the parietal cells, as you can see here. So it's not going to be C either. And then D says that the chief cell activity does not affect parietal cell activity. And we know that's not the case because we've talked about how A was true. So the answer therefore has to be A. And finally, for question five, which of the following is affected most directly by positive feedback? Option A is the chief cells. And let's have a look at how um, pepsinogen 
can lead to an increase in activity of chief cells. We spoke about it earlier in the negative feedback question, and we know that the increased concentration of peptides um, can act through this pathway, releasing gastrin, which can increase the activity of the chief cells. More pepsinogen leads to more gastrin, which leads to more pepsinogen. And so that is positive feedback. Let's have a look at the other answers to see if there's a more direct route though. Option B is the D cells. And we can see that the D cells don't have any positive feedback because they release something that's inhibitory. So metastatin only has an inhibitory effect on the chief cells and the parietal cells, and so it doesn't act on the D cells. If we look at the parietal cells then, we can see that it produces HCL, which goes on to act on the D cells, inhibiting its actions. So that's negative feedback, not positive feedback, so it's not going to be it. And then D is none of the cells shown in the figure is affected by positive feedback, which isn't true because no the chief cells are. So the answer has to be A. So that was questions one to five of the third section of the purple book. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.